you said we must be ruled by maniacs if they're able to see um, children being burnt alive, otherwise they would be turning their faces away. And the truth is, is that we are ruled by criminals, by psychopathic maniacs, because we see dead children and they see their stock prices go up. Um, as uh, Gabor Mate uh, accurately stated, what we saw in uh, Gaza this week, we are watching Auschwitz live streamed on TikTok and all of our social media uh, platforms live streamed right on our smartphones at the tip of our fingertips. We're watching these massacres take place. And every day in Gaza, we think it couldn't get any worse, massacre after massacre. Um, and according to the Gaza Health Ministry, Israel has committed over 1,000 massacres since October 7th of last year. And over a thousand families have now been wiped off of the registry. This is genocide. And this week in Deir al-Balah, um, Israel uh, bombed the tents of those displaced Palestinians in front of the Al-Aqsa Hospital. We saw horrifying images of patients still connected to their IV drips while being burnt alive. Um, there is no other way of describing this other than a Holocaust, as you even stated. A Holocaust is defined by the destruction or slaughter on a mass scale, especially caused by fire or nuclear war. And that's what we're seeing in Gaza right now. And I hate to say this, George, but that image of that 19-year-old boy, Shaban al-Dallu, uh, being burnt alive has become the iconic image that represents the horrifying reality of the Gaza genocide. It's etched in our brains forever, and we cannot unsee that ever. Um, but the way in which Israel sets ablaze tents is a planned agenda of extermination that the countries who are arming Israel, like the US and the UK, have historically used to exterminate populations they're at war with. If we listen to just the simple words of Tsipi Hatovli, Israel's ambassador to the UK, who has repeatedly stated, and by the way, has said this on Piers Morgan's show, that Israel should do what the US and England did in Dresden in its war against the Nazis when they killed 600,000 people, when they firebombed the city. In fact, she has gone on multiple TV stations and channels to say this, um, preemptively saying what Israel is going to do, saying and planning out war crimes on live TV. She justifies these war crimes, of course, because she says this is this firebomb policy was used to kill hundreds of thousands in Dresden because it was a war against Nazis. This firebombing policy was created to exploit the fragile wooden infrastructure of the buildings at that time and burnt hundreds of thousands of people alive. And Zipi Hatovli, of course, says that the price to kill innocent civilians was worth it to defeat the Nazis in Dresden. So Israel gets to do it, too, in Gaza. And the fact is that these war criminals are given unlimited airtime to broadcast their genocidal agendas and declare their war crimes before they even commit them with full impunity is not just problematic, but a hypocrisy and a showcasing of the bloodlust of the international rules-based order. Um, this war and every US, UK backed war was never about human rights, but about occupation, ethnic cleansing, land theft and resource exploitation, just continuing a legacy of modern day uh, colonialism. The uh, war criminals are them, of course, the Nazis are them. They are the people now perpetrating a Holocaust. There's no easy way to say that. And there isn't any way of avoiding saying that. They have declared an intention, uh, in words actually, in terms of the north of Gaza, but in deeds, in terms of the entire occupied Palestinian territories, including the West Bank. They are embarked upon what they clearly see as a final solution to the Palestine problem in the same way that the Nazis declared a final solution to what they called the Jewish question. It's inescapable and that it took Gabor Mate, a survivor of the Holocaust, of the original Holocaust, to coin that phrase that we both use. Watching Auschwitz on TikTok is a measure of the failure of the mainstream media. You must surmise, actually, 
that if Piers Morgan had been told about what was happening in Auschwitz, he'd be asking his guests to either look or to condemn the terrorists of the French resistance, of the German resistance. That's how upside down all discussion, all discourse on this subject has become. Absolutely. And we know that the media has flipped the narrative so in such a sophisticated way because so many of the people that support Israel are now the voices that we hear within mainstream corporate media. They purport to, you know, to be objective, to show both sides. But this is not a both sides um, situation. This is an issue of uh, ethnic cleansing, land theft, and resource exploitation. And of course, Piers Morgan's um, company, <laughs> the, the show that he hosts is funded, of course, by Rupert Murdoch, which is a close, who is a close friend and ally of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. And we at Mint Press have been actually able to conduct study after study in these investigations. If you go on our website at mintpressnews.com, of all of the um, former Unit 8200 uh, members, which is the most elite military unit of the Israeli military, which have attained uh, prestigious positions and influence in some of the world's most uh, influential uh, media companies and big tech companies to ensure that a pro-Israel narrative is dominant. And we're seeing that every single day when it comes to the coverage um, at CNN, at MSNBC, at the Washington Post, um, but we're also seeing that in our daily lives when we're watching this, uh, this genocide being live streamed um, on our smartphones. Right now, Unit 8200 um, makes up Israeli defense forces that are infamous for surveilling indigenous Palestinian populations, amassing on individuals for the purposes of blackmail and extortion. So these former Israeli spies, one could argue that they may still be working uh, as Israeli spies, are working in these big tech companies to collect information um, on users so that they could use that to extort people, to blackmail people, um, and also to ensure that a pro-Israel narrative is dominant. We're seeing that in uh, WhatsApp, in Facebook, and other big tech organizations like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. Um, we have to remember that Unit 8200 hit the headlines last year after the Pegasus scandal broke. Um, for, former Unit 8200 officers designed and implemented that software that spied on tens of thousands of politicians and likely aided in the killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi and most recently the pager attacks, uh, terrorist attack in, in Lebanon. And so we at Mint Press conducted many studies on this, whether it's in the media whether, or within big tech, and I'll talk about big tech a little bit. Um, we were able to find 99 former Unit 8200 veterans currently working for Google. Google already has a close relationship with the Israeli government. I mean, last year, along with Amazon, it signed a $1.2 billion contract with Israel to provide uh, military surveillance tech services, technology that will allow the IDF to further allow unlawful spying on Palestinians, destroy their homes, and expand um, illegal settlements. And um, Edward Snowden also told us that this unit is notoriously spying on American citizens as well. Um, and then we have Meta, the company that owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. They have also recruited heavily from the ranks of eight, Unit 8200. Undoubtedly, one of the most influential people at Meta is Emmy Palmore. She is one of the 23 individuals who sit on Facebook's oversight board. Described by Mark Zuckerberg as Facebook's Supreme Court, this oversight board collectively decides what content to accept and promote on the platform and what should be censored and deleted. Um, and also um, we have companies like Microsoft, which employs uh, hundreds, we found hundreds of former Unit 8200. And so why is having former Unit 8200 officers in charge of security development and software design at some of the world's most important communications companies a problem? Well, to start with, one of the military unit's primary functions is used for their tech to know how to carry out spying operations across the world. 
And so even Israeli newspaper Haaretz has noted that Israel has become a leading exporter of tools for spying on civilians selling invasive surveillance software to dozens of governments, many of them among the world's most worst human rights abusers. And so whether it's within corporate media or big tech, Israeli spies have infiltrated and Israeli interests have infiltrated uh, the mass media communications spectrum to control the free flow of information, to control what we know and understand about the crisis in Israel and Palestine, and also to be collecting information on us, the users, um, to be able to exploit our information. And we actually just published an investigation, <clears throat> excuse me, um, out of Yemen. As we know, Yemen has enforced, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the Red Sea blockade. And if you'd like to know more about that, George, I can talk more about what we discovered in Yemen, which is the largest spy network um, created by the Israel's Mossad and the CIA in Yemen to exploit Yemen's uh, security so that the United States and, and Israel can weaken uh, the Yemeni resistance. By all means do, because uh, well, we're big fans of the Yemenis here at the mother of all talk shows. What are they doing there? Well, first, we need to collectively extend our gratitude and send our greatest appreciation to the people of Yemen. This is a nation who has uh, heroically stood up to Israel, the United States, and Great Britain, despite being bombed, starved, blacklisted, demonized, and humanized or dehumanized for decades. They have shown us what true strength looks like in standing up to the modern day butchers and colonialists who have perpetrated one of the greatest human tra tragedies we are seeing unfold today, uh, which is the genocide in Gaza. But the war against Yemen by the CIA and Israel's Mossad is a historic one. Israel's Theodore Herzl famously declared Yemen as an enemy for defending Palestinian human rights in the 1950s. Herzl worked with the CIA to try to set up spy and military bases to try to control Red Sea access. And so one of the major successes of the Red Sea blockade has been bankrupting Israel's Ilat port. And so for that, Yemen has paid a very heavy price. And so um, Yemen has been a target of the US and UK and Israel attempting to infiltrate their society through the use of so-called pro-democracy NGOs. So we at Mint Press just released a bombshell investigation uncovering the inner workings of one of the largest spy networks ever exposed in Yemen, shedding light on how the CIA and Mossad covertly infiltrated Yemeni society through pro-democracy NGOs, including the National Democratic Institute, the Middle East Initiative, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and the IDEA Initiative, and other smaller offshoots of U.S. Aid. And so it's not a conspiracy that these pro-democracy NGOs are used to infiltrate society and to spy and recruit spies from the society. So spies were recruited through psychological manipulation, sexual blackmail, and torture, highlighting the extent to which the U.S. and Israeli operatives bent moral boundaries to secure cooperation. Um, this investigation also offers um, a disturbing glimpse into the shadow war being waged in Yemen, one fueled by exploitation and coercion. So through clandestine operations, CIA and Mossad trained operatives, manipulated local dynamics, exploited religious divisions, and sowed seeds of normalization with Israel. And so the four main goals of this spying operation that we found, based on the documents that we looked over, um, and we actually interviewed one of the spies that is being currently held in a Yemeni jail. The four goals um, of the spying operation were one, which is to encourage normalization with Israel. The second is to gather intelligence for Saudi airstrikes on military targets to weaken the Ansar al-Law anti-colonial resistance movement. The third is critical intelligence on shoulder fired air defenses, unmanned aerial vehicles and ballistic missiles. And the fourth, which may shock or may not shock others, is to encourage LGBT causes to be more publicly accepted to target the conservative Islamic society. Um, and so we interviewed a high level spy arrested last June who worked for both the CIA and the Israeli Mossad for 15 years named Abdul Muhsin Hussein Ali Azan. 
he was recruited by U.S. intelligence um, and had worked for the CIA. And he actually converted from Islam to Christianity while working for an American company in Atlanta that engaged in proselytizing under the guise of selling printer ink. So we just to give a couple of examples, um, this spy, he admitted that he did not just infiltrate and recruit Yemeni paramilitaries. He also gathered critical information on shoulder fired air defenses unmanned aerial uh, vehicles and ballistic missiles. So just to give you an example of how some of these NGOs worked, um, one of the NGOs named Dar al Salam organization promoted normalization with Israel. This group collaborated with Jewish organizations in the US and Europe aiming to disarm individuals of personal weapons like the Kalashnikovs and persuade the Islamic clerics in Yemen to promote coexistence and normalization with Israel. And just one more that I wanted to mention is um, another spy that we reviewed. His name is Shaif Hafazallah Al Hamdani. He's a senior consultant for development management programs at the US Agency for Development, served with the CIA for 27 years. He was recruited um, by the US Embassy in Sana'a. And this man carried out his espionage duties as an employee of US aid. He designed intelligence follow up and evaluation mechanisms coordinating US aid's work with the intelligence contractor MSI. Um, Al Hamdani stated that US aid's cooperation with MSI aimed to ac access project areas to locate ballistic missile launch sites and unmanned aerial vehicles. They also monitored and determined military installation locations provided coordinates to the CIA and Mossad and assessed combat situations on the fronts and the position of goods, fuel, food, and essential services. And as we know, Yemen has been the subject of not just bombing campaigns, but a horrific uh, humanitarian crisis uh, due to an illegal blockade, uh, blocking foods and fuel to, um, to Yemen. So the fact that Yemen has actually come out to expose the largest spy cell in their country run by Israel's Mossad in Israel is yet another major hit against the butchers of Gaza and once again shows us that a tiny nation with determination and dignity can stand up to the world's superpowers. And these are just some of the, the main points we uncovered in our investigation that I hope people will uh, well, be interested Well, I, I think to everyone will want to like, read the... <laughs> I think everyone will want to read the investigation. I was present in the room when Fidel Castro denounced and banned all uh, NGOs from Cuba. Uh, he described them as Trojan horses, and that was the best description of them then, 35 years or so ago. It's the best description of them now. And a Trojan horse with a rainbow on its backside is best of by any country in the global south that values its sovereignty. Manar Adli, as always, a brilliant uh, survey of what is a very, very complicated and increasingly hot political scene.